Welcome to the 2023-20, well, 2022-2023 bottle debate season. Um, my name is Mathieu. I'm one of the program directors here at Bottle who hosts the open skill-based practice, which is tonight. So we are going to record our practice this evening and sh share it with you all so that you can use it for your classroom or review it on your own time. And so today, before we get started with the actual lecture, let's see, I wanted to do a quick um, icebreaker. So the icebreaker today, um, I'll ask you all, hmm, well, this is what I want to ask you all in all seriousness. So is there certain is there a certain community that you think that is not getting the attention that it needs to get? Do you think there's a community that could be served that is not being served right now? And the second part of the question that I have for you, that community that you feel like that is not being served, how can you put people at task to serve them? And so those are the two questions I have for you today. So the question again is, do you feel like there's a community that needs to be served? Right, that's the first question. So if you feel like it's homeless people, black people, women, whatever, people in the LGBTQ community, people who you know are, are immigrants, people who are you know suffering from cancer, whatever, you wanna think about the youth, people who are 24 and younger, right? Um, but is there a certain demographic that you think needs to be served and then um, that uniquely, uniquely needs help right now? And then the other question I would ask you again is how can you put your community at task to serve them? All right, I'm gonna um, grab a pencil and then whoever wants to start first can start. Do does Mathino mean like served in bottle or just in general? Just in general. Oh, okay. Do I get a, do I have to call on people? All right, Harper, go ahead. Um, I believe that everybody should take be taken care of and that there should be just a general social safety net for anyone depend dependless on their race or gender or sexual identity. All right, so that sounds like you mean human rights. Do you think that there's a way in which we could help ensure that people have all their human rights? How will we ensure that pe everyone, if you want to ensure that everyone has their human rights, how? what is the way that you could put people at task to try to make that happen? Uh, I don't know. I feel like that is a really difficult question to answer, but I believe that just by passing laws and like coming together to work towards a better world and a future, we are all contributing to, to that. Great. Well, you answered the question. You said passing law. That answered the question. That is something that can be done to help people. We can have laws that reflect, you know, human rights. Um, initiatives and in and, and policies that advocate for human right um, um, rights to to be to be provided. All right, I'll start with Daniel. Um, one community that I believe needs more attention is the elderly. Uh, this is for a multitude of reasons. And so, uh, the elderly generally do need more help help with doing their basic tasks and living through life every day. And the elderly are, is the demographic that I believe is most susceptible to loneliness. It's, I believe that the efforts to put more attention to the elderly can be on both um, government and community levels. But for taking care of their health, I believe that the government should be in charge of making sure that these elders have a safe place to live, have all their proper amenities, and to make sure that um, they're living comfortably. And I believe we need to put it on the community to make sure that elders don't fall into loneliness after so many years through things such as letter campaigns or, 
or um or frequent checkups. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I agree. I think that um you, you know, one of the things you said is government and community levels. I think that even government and community levels working together in tandem with each other would also like priming, you know, those two agents together. I think that would work um, if you think about debate terminology. I don't think we talked about perms yet, Daniel, but, you know, that's we'll get to that. But you talked about government, which is one agency and then community the macro level versus the micro level, but you know it doesn't have to be versus. Those two levels can work together. I think you were talking about basic tasks. I used to work. Um, I got my. I had a certification from the Board of Nursing from the Board of Maryland, and so I um, worked in senior living facilities. I got my certification in mental health and in counseling, have um and and I got my med tech license as well. And so yeah, people do who are elderly. They deal with mental health. And one of the things that they teach you in the medical health profession when you're dealing with um, elderly is what, we, what they call ADLs, which is kind of like their basic tasks, like brushing their teeth, combing their hair, getting them in and out of showers. So yeah, um, and the most um, pivotal thing that you said that I really, really enjoyed that I think would do a lot of people a service is letter campaigns. I think that, you know, it's an old way um, but people who are from that past enjoy the nostalgia of writing letters and having pen pals. And so, yeah, I think that's amazing. That's that's a great suggestion. Um, I'm going to start with um, Sam. Yeah, um, let's see. So one community I think that should, um, you know, get more attention and that needs to be helped is the... Um, immigrant community, particularly coming from, uh, we call it like south of the border to the United States. I think that political action has made the lives of like tangible human beings into something that people just play chess with. And that, that is absolutely ridiculous. Like people sending, you know, migrants at the border, not because it would be better for them, but because it's going to be a political show to send them to you know martha's vineyard and stuff like that it's ridiculous and i think what we need to do is you know we need to find ways to actually help these communities and not just be politicizing them into this some sort of you know left right demographic because these are people's lives and they represent you know really marginalized members of the world because they're making this you know treacherous journey and many people are killed just to come to this border and be shut away or turned into some sort of political spectacle. So I think that the, um, you know, um, we call it, um, yeah, they need to help that community. And that can be done on a lot of different levels. Um, you know, on political levels, it can get as you know big as the national government, you know, trying to actually get Biden to do something, you know, um, making shelters, making sure that migrants are brought across the border for at the very least, you know, during processing and things like that. Um, and also on a micro level as well, in local elections and things like that, voting to keep sanctuary cities, voting to abolish ICE and things like that can do a lot of good to, um, you know, take things away. On the community level, there is, um, we call it a lot of things we can do. We can, um, you know, uh, we call it provide, you know, food, housing, things like that for people at the border, people affected. And there's also a lot of, because, you know, a lot of people in, particularly in this particular uh, area, you know, the Bay Area, Los Angeles, like, you know, one person will be over and the rest of the family won't be and things like that. And like, there's a lot of support that we can do as a community to help those who are, you know, half and half across the border there. So, yeah, I think that's a community that maybe gets a lot of attention, but it's just political, you know, spectacles and things like that. And it doesn't actually benefit them. If anything, it dehumanizes them. And that's definitely a form of oppression that needs to be addressed um, by the community and by the government, even though the government's the one administering it. So we need to stop that. Right. I think, oh, wow. Pull out some heartstrings there for a second, Sam. Almost made me want to cry. Honestly, um, I think that I, I, as you know, I, I don't know if I, I may mention to you all, but I went to um, most of my elementary, so my grammar school days, and um, my the first part of, um, well, middle school and elementary school, I went to an immersion school, so all of my classes were in Spanish, 
And so literally, you know, I remember getting to school and there would be crock pots of arroz con pollo and being excited for snack time because I knew I was about to get some chicken and rice. And, you know, black people, we love us some chicken and rice now. <laughs> so so I'm, just, I'm just, so it had the set song, it had the set front. So, you know, those are like literally, if it, it reminds me of home. It reminds me of a safe space, you know, and, you know, my upbringing, some of my upbringing and my being, you know, some of my teachers and the people who raised me were part of the Latinx community. And I don't know where I would be without that community in my life. And so, yeah, I think that, you know, um, the displacement, you talked about displacement of families and processing, and and you talked about, um, you know, people being made a, po a political spectacle. You also talked about people being made fungible and, you know, talk about Biden and maybe having some executive order or something, you know, I think that all those things are definitely some things that could be considered. Um, did we talk to Elliot? Ellie, you want to share? Um, uh, sure. Um, I guess like community wise, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. We could like do like you know Christmas is coming up and like it's cold outside. I remember in, like when I was in here we used to do like socks drives or whatever and stuff like that. Um and like gloves and hats. Um though I think food drives are more effective just because when I went out to go give out socks a lot of them were like, is it food? And we're like, no, it's like fuzzy socks. And I felt really bad. So I think we should probably do like, you know, something like that. Cause like winter's coming and I think it's important um, for the community to like make everyone feel jolly, I guess. Yeah. That's some great suggestions. Um, Ellie, obviously, she can she knows the intentions of everybody you can't you can't fit nothing past ellie she's just so mature in that way you know i love you for that i always tell you that um ella i don't know there's just like a lot i think um one of the ones i don't know if anybody said it was like it kind of whole like discussion about like you know there should be no same sex marriages and all of this stuff. And I'm like, why one, do you care? Two, why is it like, why do we need to have this conversation? Because like, it, it, it just like, doesn't even make sense to me. It's like, what is one wrong with being gay or lesbian or um, anything like that? Why? I don't know. It's just so crazy to me. It's like, it's one, not even your business. If um, two, like a gay couple is out on the street holding hands, you see it. How does that really affect you? Like, you know, it's like, it doesn't affect you. And then why does that have to be like this whole debate in the policy world? Like why not like, not like our policy world where we're like queer theory in NATO. No, not that. Um, I mean, like when people, up in the policy world, like the actual policy world, are like, um, you know, trying to like reverse all these, like letting people of the same marriage, uh, wait, no, of the same sex marry each other. Yeah, that's the right phrase. And I, mean, I just think it's just like, there's no words to explain it. It's just like, it's none of your business. And I don't know. It's just so crazy to me. It's like, there's nothing wrong with being gay. There's nothing wrong with being lesbian. And then there's that whole debate about the rest of the pride community. There's nothing wrong with being trans or anything like that. And it's also none of your business. Nothing they do actually affects you. They are not directly implementing anything in your lives. Rather, you are implementing something in their lives. And it's just crazy how like, I can't remember when it was, but like it wasn't so long ago that people of the same sex couldn't marry each other. I don't know. It's just so crazy to me. And then like we're still having that debate about like um and all these news articles like popping up, like, oh, you know, Roe versus Roe v. Wade was overturned. Now they're gonna try to overturn all these same sex marriage law, the marriage, yeah. And I'm like, 
No, it shouldn't even like be a discussion in the first place. Like I, I'm not, I'm not like saying like, don't say gay or anything. Cause like, I think it's important to like, make sh- t- like, you know, like have like, not don't say gay, but don't make it your business. You know, like it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to be like, this is a thing. And even like, and it's okay. Like, cause it's not a big deal. It's not anybody's business. It's not like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, it's just a human thing. It's not like something it's like, it's like being straight. It's the same thing. There's no difference. Like that kind of thing. Like not don't say gay, but like, don't over exaggerate about it. Especially if it like, doesn't even relate to you. Like it's somebody else's life, some random stranger's life. Like don't even, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure. like I agree. And I think, you know, a lot of your uh, sentiments that you have said, I echo. I think that a lot of people involve themselves in things because they're of their own insecurities I think that's just human nature and I think that a lot of people find confusion within probably their own sexuality potentially and so I think people don't know how to come to terms with that um and so I think a lot of people try to find ways to offend people because they're offended by their own feelings that they have about themselves so sometimes people hurt people because they're hurt you know so I'm so proud of you all for um, being able to share some of these things. Um, We'll probably pick up on this conversation a little bit later, but I just wanted to do, you know, a little brainstorming activity. I'll keep my notes for another time. Ella probably knows what what I intend to do. I mean, not Ella, Ellie, excuse me. I get y'all confused sometimes, but Ellie probably knows um, what I intend to do. Um, But anyways, um, so... um, I'm gonna give this quick presentation. If you wanna listen, you can listen. Um, If you wanna ensure that you have what you need to have prepared for um, me today. So um, Daniel, I wanna see that one and see again. Um, So yep, Sam, I wanna hear uh, a rebuttal redo. I think from all y'all, I wanna hear a rebuttal redo. If you don't have a rebuttal redo, please um, show me some edits or, you know, or something that you have not shown me if it's a new one I see or something like that. Just show me something that we can work on. Um, so the presentation today will be over tournament prep. So things to acknowledge about tournament prep. So I just really wanted to go over this um, because I want to make sure that this was posted on our YouTube page so that everyone is aware of how to prep, but also to just to review with y'all um, about you know the methods of prepping. So yeah, tournament prep by me. <laughs> so again, you should be like tacking things, setting things up, figuring out how to draw the line um, to your debate career. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a better debater, then you know you know it's a matter of working on you know. Your critical thinking, it's about a matter of being a better speaker. It's a matter of being a better, have, have, ensuring that your literature is, the, is you know, uh, prompted the way it needs to be in order to be the best bullets for a debate in terms of having the best things and the best arsenal in your art, artillery, art, you know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't in the military. I don't know nothing about guns. Anyways, yeah. but you just want to make sure you have the best ammunition possible when engaging in in these standoffs of debate. Um, And then really quickly, just a quick reminder, if you have not, okay, this is very important. If you have not registered, and this is for the students who are also in this video call, if you have not registered, please register. Thank you. All right, it's very important that we register because if we don't have you accounted for, this program would end, right? They need to ensure that I'm just not making people up I'm not just buying barbecue barbecue for myself. They want to make sure that there are they really see students showing up. So make sure that you register that we have you accounted for in our program, and not just for the students in this video call. For those of you watching, if you plan on attending the next the next tournament, December third. If you plan if you plan on keep coming to practice, we're no longer going to share our snacks and resources with you until that's accomplished. All right. So please, please, please ensure that you register to be in our program. Use that QR code at the bottom of your screen there. All right, moving on. So this is about tournament prep. 
tournament prep is important. You want to make sure that you're prepped out. You want to make sure that you are at your best. One of the things that's important um, when we debate is we use evidence, we use sources. So make sure that your evidence is organized. Please, please, please. It's one of the biggest things I would do. You know, and 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 you can do it together as a team. In my partnership, I organize everything because I was just the most organized person. I'm pretty, pretty organized. I, just, I don't know how I do it when everybody else in my family, no one's organized. But, you know, today I spent all day cleaning my kitchen. That's, that's what I do. So <clears throat> I don't like to be disorganized because when I'm disorganized, I can't be as successful as I want as, as I want to be. Things seem more cluttered. You're not able to achieve the things that you want to achieve. So please be organized. Make sure you not, because if you organize, you know where things are. You're able to pull the evidence when you need it. And you're able to understand how much you have within your artillery. You don't know you have all these arguments to be able to put them out if you don't have them arguing it, if you don't have them organized. You might think you have three arguments to be able to win something, but maybe you have 10, but you don't know because you didn't organize all of your cards to be able to figure out how much you have to be able to respond to something. So again, it's really important for you to organize your evidence. The other thing is carrying paper copies. Yes, y'all think that I was born in the era without computers? There was laptops in my era. We just didn't choose to use them as the primary mode. Speaking of Glenbrooks, my junior year of Glenbrooks, and I told you what happened. My partner and I decided to go electronic our junior year. We were doing pretty good that year. I had broke out a few tournaments, and then Glenbrooks happened. We was four seven, I mean four three. <laughs> I we wanted to be five two in hopes of breaking because even five twos rarely break at that time. Speaking of Glenbrooks, um, and we went four three because uh, my partner um, in the one and R had messed up or something. His computer crashed or something, and he was after his computer crash. He was trying to pull his computer back up during the time that the clock was running. Um, I'm trying to throw, give him my flows. Um, so he can know, luckily he just took my flows and he was able to figure out how to, what the arguments were, but he was still trying to pull up his flow and the arguments he'd had, and it just didn't work. So please have a backup. You don't know what's going to happen with the Wi-Fi at this school. You just don't know, you know, anything could happen with your computer, you know, TSA could drop it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I'm for real that you, we might have to call TSA to get you reimbursed for your computer, but whatever. Also, Again, so don't bet on technology. Technology does malfunction. You know, bring that magic accordion. I remember well, there was one point in my debate career, I literally had an expando and I was beating people with that expando, like tubs of evidence and computers, one expando, right? So as long as you know what's most important within your arsenal, you know, you 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 can levy your strongest and your, the arguments that you know have proven the test of time you put that in your magic expando. The things that you've sharpened, you know, those are the things that you want to put in your magic expando, but you can't ex sharpen those arguments. Again, if you're not doing your rebuttal redos, if you're not rehearsing your speeches, you know, you if you're not reviewing and constantly criti thinking critically about your arguments, then, you know, you're not going to really know what's most important to put in those expandos. But you should have a magic expando for the affirmative and you should have a magic expando for the negative. Sometimes I would have a theory magic expando because I don't think you need it anymore. But back in my day, I would, you know, F saying screw the topic or not, you know, rejecting the topic or saying F the topic in those days was a little different. Um, but even now, if you, if you want to think about, you know, the positions you may have, sometimes having a theory expando is is cool in your theory expendo you would have your topicality your framework you know your condo um you know maybe your education bad whatever um you know fiat role playing whatever those um particular theory arguments speed critiques those things can be put in your theory expando and so typically all i really needed i'm gonna be honest if i was to ever debate anyone typically i only needed one expando even in college it was one expando for afneg I never really kicked out of a lot of stuff. I stick to what I, I'm much like Sam. I have this one, one AC, that's it for the rest of the year. There may be some changes here and there. I'm not going to even name my one AC because I don't even want to give it no, like, because I might want it to change depending on the link narrative, but it's based in a particular, maybe um, 
literature base or maybe a, a certain um, philosophy base or certain knowledge production base. And so if, if there's a certain knowledge production base, I tend to stick with that. And so, yeah, but if, you know, just having, and then, you know, you can break your expando to have multiple st strategy options for AF. So sometimes I will put, even in that AF expando, I would have AFs that were similar. Maybe the, the text would be different, but I would ensure that my front lines would be, you know, um, kind of, you know, my front lines would kind of be able to fit both AFs. If the front lines cannot fit both affirmatives, just because of, theory or knowledge production or whatever, or, you know, the nature of how you resolve whatever you're trying to resolve, um, then you can, you know, you can still file both in there. And then if you need answers for cat for both AFs, you just put both blocks in those same AF expando under answers to cat. You just, um, I would just put a paperclip because I'm one of those, what you call, um, I can crosshatch when I debate. So I have like, this will be all my cap answers. These will be my sec all my security answers. So I crouch hatch. And then like, let's say this is my like military answers. So like how I debate is I'll be like, all right, this is my militarism flow. I'll argue down the line by line, moving on, turn over. This is my um, whatever flow I said it was, turn over and now I'm on on case and I'm done. So, you know, having paper is good in cross asset hatching and when you're thinking about signposting. So that's why I really like to use paper. I didn't do everything on paper. Sometimes I'll, I'll read between paper and computer because sometimes I will keep those squirrel files or if there was an argument that's way out there that I need to answer, that is not a normal argument to answer. I need to pull something from open evidence or back in those days, there wasn't open evidence. It was crosstex.com. But if I had to pull something from any one of those debate forms or any one of those resources or any digital resource that, you know, I would go between paper and you can still cross hatch and go from your computer. Like that's still possible. I've seen Ella do it. She's been a perfect example of that. So you can do it. Like you, how you had, how you did at Noddle, you would sometimes read from your flow. You sometimes read from your, um, from your paper flows in your computer. You can also cross hatch like, and do it with your flows along with your evidence and along with um, your computer. You can do multitasking, all three. Um, that's what debate is, multitasking. Make sure that you highlight your evidence, right? Like sometimes I would have a double highlight. I, well, not sometimes. I always had a double highlight. The reason why you want to have a double highlight, you want to have the long version, you want to have the short version. I would do the long highlight in yellow and the short highlight in orange. Um, that's just me. Um, typically, it does go in order. I think I've touched on that order. It goes yellow, orange, blue, and green is the same. And then the last one is purple. So, um, yeah. So, if you're doing multiple highlights, the longest one would be yellow. The second longest one would be orange. The third, um, the the what sorry the longest one ever would be yellow like evidence you see how this is highlighted so i don't know if i can do it I, I can't show you here but like let's say you would highlight evidence in yellow and then you would highlight evan <laughs> evident in orange and then you would highlight evid in um green and um blue and then you highlight ev in purple if that makes sense so it goes from longest the longest highlight would be in yellow and then the shortest highlight would be purple then what highlight would you read you would read so whatever depending on how how much you how much of that warrant you need to read it depends like it's, you just do it in that color so you can be adaptable to debate round maybe somebody really doesn't go hard on that particular argument so you read the yellow highlight i mean you read the the the, the orange highlight instead of the yellow highlight um, but if, if it's an argument that they're really, really going for, and you're sure that they're like definitely going for it, then maybe you need to read the whole warrant instead of this is just a shortened warrant. And so to make that choice, you do the double highlight. And so that's another part of organizing your evidence is making sure that you're choosing the, the, the highlight, not only choosing the highlight, I wish I could show you, I got my evidence packed away, but like, um, not only are you highlighting, but like if there's major buzzwords or passion words, I would highlight that in red or bolden them or circle them. So like if I was thinking about like this particular um, slide and I wanted to bolden some of the buzzwords or the passion words, I would probably highlight organize because that's a task word. That's like 
y'all need to organize. So I would probably like circle that or or make that red or bold in that to know to really hit that hard. You know what I'm saying? So all, those are all the things to make sure that you're invoking passion. You don't want to seem stale. You want to make sure you have inflections. And so you want to make sure that what you're inflecting on represents the warrant and all those things. So you want to make sure, again, you're doing all the things to look like a winner. So, and, and you want to make sure you have it highlighted so you can avoid saying, mark the card. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing worse than a debater who's like, mark the card there, mark the card there, mark the card there. It's like, what, what you didn't prepare for this debate round or something? That's what I be thinking. <laughs> but yeah, so just avoid saying mark the card every five seconds after you finish your card. Have multiple highlights. Um, so yeah, just organize your evidence. Also too, I didn't put on that slide. It's uh, something to keep in mind. Retag something. You can also retag things all the time. Just because you receive a tag doesn't mean you can't retag it. Even sometimes I would get tags from college debaters and I'd be like, no, I'm gonna retag it for myself. <laughs> like, I don't like the wording of this. I don't like, this is gonna get me into like this other K. I don't wanna get trapped in this K. So I'm gonna change the rhetoric. So you wanna be mindful of the rhetoric you use sometimes just to avoid certain links to certain things. Not just Ks, but sometimes even dissets, right? Like you don't wanna say that you functionally do something that you don't functionally do, right? So you wanna avoid how you articulate your um, the implementation of your plan or the assumptions of what your plan may um, indicate. Debate is a team sport. So work with your debate partner. You know, um, it's, that is the, 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 the most essential thing you should always do. Um, I'm really proud of how Ellie and Ella, you all worked on that last tournament. I really see y'all's partnership really growing and succeeding. Um, so y'all, that communication y'all have, like, is really important. Like, and teaming up in cross sex. Oh my gosh. If y'all not team, and it's not, it shouldn't be a tag team. Teaming up should be like, yes, you're answering this question. And, 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 and so Ella sometimes would see like, hey, jump in this cross sex and ask that question. And so Ellie would be like, what you mean by that? You know what I'm saying? And no, I didn't get the answer. So now that I'm preparing for my next speech, no, I really need you to answer that partner, that question that my partner asked. So what you mean by that? So it shouldn't be a tag team and like a thing of like, I'm just speaking for you. It should be a thing of like, how are we helping each other better make our arguments sound congruent together? Right. And so that's y'all should be working together to do that in the round is figuring out how can you make your arguments sound parallel and congruent to each other and that you'll that you're both um, conveying the same message. Right. And and responding with the same arguments. Right. You don't want to take, you know, and, and, and also too like it should be a building thing like it should be like, yeah, I said all these things, but my partner said all these things, too. So you should be marking and checking each other's flows. And, and again, it's about working as a team, you know, making sure, hey, did you do that thing? Because we need this done. I need that one I see done. I'll work on these blocks. You know, y'all should create a checklist of things that y'all need to accomplish before the next tournament and get those things accomplished as a team within y'all's partnership, not just as within a team, but also we are a debate league. So I'm going to reiterate some of the things I said to you earlier. Um, before we started recording, it's like y'all should be working together as a league. Y'all should be pulling each other up for scrimmages. Y'all should be pulling up, checking each other and be like, look, I heard that rebuttal redo. Uh, I, I, I heard that redo that you beat me with. Can I hear that redo you gave to me again? You know what I'm saying? And you and that person should be comfortable giving that redo. It shouldn't be like, oh, I was scared debating you because I didn't know what the judge was going to be, be. Like, we are a league. The, we shouldn't be scared of each other. We should be, the 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 the, the bigger thing to do is to really figure out how we're going to defeat these teams that aren't leagues that have more resources than we do. And I hate to be like that. It's not a racial war or anything like that, but, or a league war or anything. But the truth of the matter is, is that we don't have the certain coach dynamic. We don't have the dynamic from y'all schools the same, really these schools, they they have budgets to put on these programs. Literally we out here finding donations panhandling for y'all to be able to attend these tournaments we panhandling y'all okay we broke so we're not necessarily broke we're not broke but we're trying to do things to avoid us from being broke and to ensure that we can sustain and so again like you know take take credit and integrity in your work you know and 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 and, and call each other make sure that y'all are accountable don't just have me be accountable for y'all y'all be accountable for each other again this is a team sport but it's also the other thing that I got to add on here is that we are a league. So share your work, have your partner 
work with other coaches. My my coach was not the only person who gave me advice. Even within my league, there's this woman by the name of Miss Brackman who would also help me. Um, so um, Sam, you know, I, I, Sam goes to Amy. That's great. That's amazing. Y'all should continue to do stuff like that. Sam, you should, you know, um, you know, hit Noah up sometimes. He's going to sometimes ask me, you know, questions. That's fine. But, you know, and sometimes even Najara is going to ask me questions. That's okay. They're going to be like, what was your intention behind this? And then they might agree with it and they might not, they might not agree with it. But it's up for you to get, the, the purpose is for you to figure out what is critically best for you to articulate and around. So go around people to figure out how to sh sharpen your point. Use this league as your resource. Um, you know, share and use Slack, right? Like I, I said this before, you know, before I came to, to you know, here I, we use Slack for work, not just for debate purposes in terms of like debate work, but it's like my job to use Slack as well behind the scenes to do like programming and organizational work. Before I got this job, I was using Microsoft Teams, which is much very similar to Slack. A lot of y'all schools use Discord. So, you know, and outside of just fake old debate that these systems are systems that are used in the real world. These are soft skills we're trying to teach you to help you in your educational and career world. So do it. Use these resources now because you have to do it in, in your future when you become 18 out of your mama's house. Um, consider the relationship that you will build um, and that you will enrich with the, this competitive edge, right? Like, I ain't gonna lie for me, you know, I was friends and cool with people, but I just wanted to beat people, honestly. <laughs> I just wanted to, not to say that I was smarter than people, but I just wanted to like, um, I wanted to win. I really wanted to, to, I really read and I worked hard and I really wanted to prove that I knew my stuff. The other thing that you should do is you should really, really master your first constructive. How you start the debate is so, 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 so important <laughs> um, that um, you want to really read when you're reading it aloud, you want to make sure that you read and understand the one they see thoroughly. You want to make sure that you read it to yourself, not just out loud, um, but when you read it to yourself, does it make sense what you're reading? You know, should everything be there? Are there things that should be taken out? Are there things that are not necessary? Is there things that you can add to add more off and more vibrancy and more need and purpose for your speech, right? Think about all of those things when you're um, presenting your first constructive because how you start the debate is really so important, which is the reason why I loved being the one I see. Oh my gosh, I, I still do. If somebody puts me in a debate room right now, I want to be the one I see. Um, how you start um, the debate, again, like I told you, it's very integral to not, it's not just integral to the win, but it's also integral to how you win. So just make sure you remember that. Um, you should know the few, the first few pages by heart. Um, make sure that you really do understand the first few pages by heart because if you don't, you want to make sure that you're having eye contact with the judge, right? You don't want to be looking down at the paper, the first initial impression that the judge gets from you, right? So you want to make sure you're building rapport with the judge. So typically, honestly, I would remember the first two cards by heart. And, the, and all I'm doing is looking at the judge while I'm trying to convey my message. I may be gesticulating, which means talking with my hands or gesturing or having body language in such a way that the, the judge feels that I'm con connected to what I'm saying, but also I'm connecting to the judge, right? So it's, it's important to how you persuade someone. It's really, really crucial to how you persuade someone. And it shows the conviction that you have to... Um, to the conversation. So spend time connecting with the judge. Make sure that, again, make sure that there's purpose. And the way that you give purpose is by being clear. Um, allow the judge to be able to follow you, signpost and organize your arguments. If you have a main point, make sure that there's sub points. If there's an advantage, make sure that there's, um, uh, there's uh, multiple um, cars that support your advantage. You want to have multiple cars that support your solvency. So again, you want the judge to be able to follow you. So make sure that you're tagging and, uh, and numbering your cards within that first constructive. And that, and, the, and that makes it easier for the debate when following the flow for those numbers to, to remain, right? Because you can be like, continue to extend my number one, continue to extend my number two, continue to extend my number three. 
Um, and that also makes sure that you have all the parts within your arsenal. You know, it takes at least three, one, two, and three to make a diss ad, right? So if you know you're not, if you know that there's a certain amount of numbers there, it can kind of remind you of the parts that you need to have, and it helps you with that check mark of like, did I extend this? Did I respond to this when they try to knock out my link scenario? Have I responded in enough to my link scenario? Should I? How many ones and twos and threes should I add to this particular flow? Like. It's, it's also a numbers game, right? So um, you want to ensure that you have the amount of bullets and the amount of arsenal you need to 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 leverage the debate and then leverage the, the conversation. Is your arguments worth making it through? So think about, you know, are those initial arguments worth making through? Like, what is the foundation of, of, of your conversation and of your thesis and your main points? What, what are you trying to convey? And should be what you're trying to convey lead itself all the way to the end of the debate. And on the last time me thinking about this, what I would do is to think, what am I, I would think about what I would say in my rebuttals first, because what you're saying in your rebuttals are going to be those winning arguments. So think about what's going to be said in the rebuttals first, whether you're on the AF or the negative, it doesn't matter. Think about, start from the rebuttal first and think about those main, the main thesis. Remember, you're like Toya Green said, you're only going to win on one argument. So when thinking about that one argument that's never going to, they can't beat you on ever, what is that uniqueness question? That should be really emboldened in that first constructive. Have a to-do list, keeping yourself organized. Write a list of arguments you need to have a brief for. Write a list of arguments you probably need to have more evidence for. Check it off your list. Y'all don't have to debate for hours and hours. I never, look, I love having, I, first of all, you can tell by my adult life that I wasn't doing all this type of work in debate. I wanted to win, but not that much, right? Like I knew that such and such who was a nerd, who's going to be first seed every time, that's fine. <laughs> as long as I got my little hardware, you know, it's cool. You know, that was my goal. So, you know, and, and that's how I was able to calculate if I was a, a good debater or not was based on, you know, my wins loss record. Sometimes I was really losing. Sometimes I was winning, winning. And so, you know, but you stick at it. And so one of the things that helped me continue to manage my, my journey through debate, because also too, I'm very prideful and like, I would do good that year. So that next following year, I wanted to keep my title. <laughs> that's how I was. I didn't want nobody to take my title. And there's a few titles that I, I did have it continuously each year. Um, and that's just a matter of making sure, again, I was organized that I kept myself, um, I, I kept the pace of what I needed. Um, I didn't spend hours every night researching. That wasn't me. Some nights I was just making sure I had my, once, once I got my one NC done, it was just a matter of doing redos. And, I mean, not redos. It was just a matter of me being in the mirror, doing my speaking drills. Once I knew my one NC done, was done or my one NC was done, then it was a matter of moving into my research, moving into writing my arguments up. And then it, it matter, then you, you, know, you, you write up your initial arguments. If some of them don't work, you throw some away, you add some new ones, you make changes, you amend. But again, you don't know what to amend. If, again, you're not engaging in patches debate. You're not doing your redos. If you're not rehearsing in the mirror, you know what I'm saying? Um, take some time to really, really, um, you know, and, and also you can't be doing these things if you don't have your evidence organized, right? So again, have those briefs, have that evidence organized, make, the, make sure that you have considered your extensions and the briefs and briefs submitting your front lines, the blocks, you know, all those things, same words. But make sure that the prepared arguments that you should have prepared that, you know, you're continuing to sharpen them. And you can't, if you're always consistently leaving that argument here, leaving that flow there, then you're not sharpening it because you're not remembering what happened in the past. So you got to continue to bring what you're learning through with you in your journey. Um, because it's, again, like teams are going to spin it in different ways. And you want to ensure that you close the door, that they're not able to spin it that way. Um, so you want to make sure that if they get to it, it's not like, oh, I knew that they can make that argument and I made it kind of like last time. No, don't be like that. Make sure that every time you hear it, you know, it's not going to be a problem. All right. Um, and sometimes there's certain arguments you don't have trouble with. I was never really good at theory. That's why my debate partner, always, I, he literally handled theory every time. Not to say I couldn't handle theory. And sometimes I had to handle theory because if I didn't handle theory, it would get dropped. But, um, 
you know, some of us are good things at others, but also again, again, this goes into working as a team and being able to build each other up and figuring out, you know, what is, who can take what workload. So having a checklist within your partnership, you can figure out what to work on that workload, pace yourself. It only really, literally, I only did 15 minutes to 30 minutes a night, pace your workload, work ahead. Don't procrastinate. The more you prepare, the better off you are. Get an early start within the year. If you haven't done certain things at this point of the debate season this year and your sophomore year, then you should probably do it because junior year is probably going to be, you should be at a certain level. I, I'm expecting you to be at a certain level next year. Um, test your stuff out. Read it aloud. Review with your, with, review with the lay person. They don't have to be and know and be partial to debate lingo to be able to assist you. Work with people who are not common to debate. They have good, keep it simple, stupid arguments that can help you. A lot of times, the it's not the arguments that take a stretch that wins debates. Like people think it's these arguments that take a stretch to win. No, it's the simple arguments that wins debates. So don't make it a stretch. Um, also too, like again, back to your front lines, ensure that you have enough arguments prepared, write a checklist, do what you need to have to have within your arsenal. Consider your partner's arguments, think and be the devil's advocate, right? You should be writing front lines against yourself. If you're not writing front lines against yourself, how do you, how are you going to be, you have to think like how the other team is going to think to beat them. So think about and, and be preemptive about what these teams are thinking about. Think of, think about the weakness of your arguments, right? Not just to think of the weakness of your opponent's arguments, but think about the weakness within your own argument. Um, ensure that your briefs are formatted and that they are legible, right? They should be, you know, you should have things tabbed over, sub points. You know, use Microsoft Word the same way y'all should use it for school and for classrooms. Like y'all know, y'all should be formatting things and knowing how to format things. If you don't know what I mean by formatting, we can talk that, about that more specifically later. Later, um, I think I might have an actual little picture here. Um, again, create a magic expando that's physical. Review your briefs with your debate coach and your peers as well, not just lay people. Practice your briefs in a scrimmage debate with your teammates. Again, disclosure is really important. Disclosure is something that we do in debate. You want to ensure that you put stuff up on Wiki. If people don't, you know, you want to make sure you're getting the best arguments to defeat you. It's not a matter. Yes, it's a matter of sometimes keeping, like, again, if this is a new debate, if it's a new strategy, you know, then you don't have to disclose it immediately. But if you've been having this for a while, go ahead and put that thing up on there. And, and, and let people have at it and eat you up alive if they need to, okay? Because you want to make sure that you're able to cement your case in a position. You want to make sure that your case is cemented, that if somebody hits it, they finger gone hard. That's because it's so, your, 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 your case is so strong that it's like brick, you know? Ensure that you have enough closing door arguments. You have enough even if arguments. Even if they say that, you still win this debate. You want to make sure that you 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 have enough overviews to be like, my stuff outweighs and I control uniqueness in this debate. Ensure that your text is understood by your judge. So if you're writing something down or if you have something that you're printing, don't use a funny text. Don't use cosmic sayings. Don't do weird stuff. And also have multiple text options. I don't even know what I mean by that. What do I mean by have multiple text options? Oh, um, like if you are going, to, if you have multiple, you should, but what I mean to say is you should have multiple plan text and you should have multiple um, things to disclose and debate. You should not be running one affirmative. You should have multiple affirmatives and you should have multiple generic neg strategies. So don't just have one, one position. That's what I mean by that. You should be doing speaking drills. Your voice is a muscle, right? Use the tool, like just when you sing, there's times where you're supposed to rest your voice. I, I, and I did this when I was a debater. I, me and my debate partner wouldn't talk. It's like after a certain point, we're not talking to each other. We would just look at each other sometimes and be like, mm-hmm, with tea in our hand. <laughs> like for real, like we just gonna sit here. We gonna, we about to watch this show and go to bed. And sleep is also important on your vocal muscles. It's a muscle. So exercise your tool. The, I would not do any speaking drills. I think sometimes I would do speaking drills the night before the night we would get there. So I would have one night off. That's as, and that's if I was really, if I knew I really needed to get something 
prepared or something that I really need to rehearse. But if it's something that I know that I got, I would leave two days off. I'm not doing any speaking. I'm not going to be doing any yelling. It's really important that y'all do that. Because remember, y'all are speed reading too. So if you want to spread somebody, you can't do that if your muscle is tired. If you can't get through it, if you're not sounding clear, remember, because I expect y'all not just to be monotone. I, I, I expect dictation, uh, um, diction, excuse me, not dictation. <laughs> but I, I expect diction and enunciation. Um, so, you, you know, practice your motor skills, which is your mouth. Review your arguments. How does it sound out loud? Are these words something that you are concerned to use or that you are connected to? Is there purpose? Is there is Are you connected? Do you feel like this is something that you can finesse in this debate? Read your 1AC and 1AC multiple times. You know, I say make sure that, you again, you should know some of it by heart. You should be looking at the judge most of the time. Your 1AC, 1NC, you should not be looking at your paper. You should know it well enough that most of the time you're looking up. These are the these are my first initial arguments, and it's not going to change. And when I get up, I'm going to be saying the same thing. When my partner gets up, he's going to say these same things. I'm going to make sure you understand right now the first time that you got it. Because when I get up in this next speech and they have arguments, I'm going to say they didn't respond to what I said, that I'm eight minutes. Well, most of the time I would be like, I'm eight minutes ahead in this debate. A lot of times I would say in college debate, I'm nine minutes ahead in this debate. Because why? There's nothing that they said that could respond to the things that I said. And I made that convincing to you that first time. And all I got to do from now, now, this point is to extend it. So, you know, a lot of times, again, that first speech needs to be concrete, that it, it can't be torn apart. So you should make sure that it is at its best potential. And you should correct and edit it 10 times or more before you read it to an audience for a competition. Practice your speaking drills. Practice your flowing. Practice flowing the news. Read, uh, Listen to a podcast. Watch a presidential debate. There's debates online from previous years you can watch debates from previous years you might find some arguments from previous years and you'd be like that's a good strategy you might hear some new arguments that can help you from different years you might find some college debates that can help you I, that that's I, honestly I, I would not be the debater i am if i did not steal stuff from the college debaters because the college debate stuff is way better than the high school stuff i'm like i'm on i'm not even gonna front you so if you want to pull stuff from the college debate circuit do that you know, be advanced. You know what I'm saying? Practice your advancement. You know what I'm saying? Practice that first constructive speech. You know, um, um, have pre-written cross-examination questions. Sometimes I would have a, a cheat sheet or a list of questions in before I came into the debate. Well, most of the time I had pre-written cross at least a, 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 a at least a certain pool. It wasn't all the questions I would ask. Sometimes I wouldn't use all the questions within that pool. But sometimes I would have a pool of questions that I already knew before coming into that, that competition. And you should, you know, again, be switching sides. We do, we do, I don't care if y'all performance debaters or not. We still do switch side debate. You need to be thinking about what these non-people of color are going to be thinking sometimes. And for those of us who are non-non-people of color, we still need to be thinking about the people who are not within our league are going to be saying against us, right? So you just want, and, and even if you do traditional policy debate, you still want to think about switch sides. You should always think about what your opponent is going to say. You should always be switching sides. Um, conduct practice debate scrimmages as often as you can. Do re rebuttal redos, um, like I said, before tournaments. Some odd tips. Odd tip, watch the news. Read current events. Um, check up on new, new developments in the news that could impact your argument. Remember your parts. Make sure you understand policy debate cheat sheet or any debate manual that you can find online. There's debate manuals too that can help you understand theory. If you feel like I'm not the best one helping you, if you feel like Amy's not the best one helping you with any argument, not just theory, but dissents, critiques, whatever, there's manuals like for free PDFs. Google research things. We'll probably do another um, once because I used to do, okay. At Debate camps, they taught me how to do research. Um, there's ways, and I've, and I've expressed this before, but there's ways in which you should use um, the search engine that, you know, quickly gets you to your sources that you need, um, which will be another presentation where I'll teach y'all more about how to cut cars and how to make briefs. Um, but um, 
yes, you are there. If you, you know, need help with debate and you need a cheat sheet, not just the policy debate cheat sheet that Amy created, you can use, but there's debate manuals you can download online for free through PDFs. You should endure the buzzer by me or any coach. Endure the buzzer or the bell. I use a bell. Amy uses the buzzer. But you should move past the hecklers and the distractions. Some, sometimes debaters are beeps and beeps and jerks. But the truth of the matter is they can be hecklers during debate rounds and they can try to provide distractions for you um, in order for you to be, get off your game, right? So um, what you should want to do is uh, you should endure the buzzer. Me being there and making sure that you are not feeling anxious in a round. So that's the, another purpose of that activity is for you to also not be as anxious. So really doing those rebuttal, rebuttal, do, rebuttal redos with that buzzer is really important. And also to y'all use sometimes use a lot of filler words. I use a lot of filler words, even just in conversation, like, you know what I'm saying? Or um, 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 all of those filler words we have to eradicate from y'all's vocabulary so that y'all can be able to spread better, ha add more to the flow. So we need to really work on that um that uh buzzer drill um so you know pull me up you know and be like Mathino, i need to do that buzzer drill pull me up pull, pull, pull up on me um get your sleep again uh which is another odd tip that i talked about earlier remember different parts of the topic get credence and continuity and context to your argument if you don't know about nato if you don't know about the history of nato and if you feel like you don't know enough about nato Go back and watch videos, pull up YouTube. Y'all got the internet. Y'all, 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 you know, y'all can quickly get on TikTok, but y'all can't learn. Get on NATO. Go to NATO.gov. I don't even know what it is. And I'm talking crap, but I have been to the website. Go to the NATO website. Has anybody been to the NATO website? Honestly, go to the NATO website if you haven't. Um, expand your vocabulary. You know, um, I've been learning some new words recently. My my word of the day two years, two days ago was abjure, right? So do things, no, I'm serious. Have a word of a day. Like you all are orators. Being an or orator or, or, or using, or being a person who engages in oratory speaking, we use words. I told y'all before, y'all already deal with topicality. Y'all should be reading a dictionary, seriously. Y'all need y'all need to know. Like, I know that no, 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 I know that y'all said I've used words that y'all don't understand. I know Ellie made fun of me and be like, oh, but you know, a lot of times you talk and I don't know some of the words you say. Honestly, I really do have a passion for the gift of gab. I do love debate. I do love public speaking. And so because of that, like seriously, I, here's some of my cards right here. Um, because I do want to be better for y'all. I want to be a better coach for y'all too. Like I do, I truthfully do. So I, I the things that I'm 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 saying that I want y'all to do, I want that that I want y'all to do, I'm doing as well. Here's my cards. Here's the card, Abjure. I used it in the sisters yesterday when I was helping my 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 one of my cousins with their speech, because I helped my cousins with she's taking a calm 101 class in college. And so when I was helping her write one of her speeches, I ended up using one of the words that I learned in one of my speeches. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not just my new word, my new word of the day is ab aberration. I'm still trying to learn what that means. I'm still in the A's of this little <laughs> thing that I'm doing. But again, expand your vocabulary, read the dictionary, read a thesaurus, you know, be, be familiar with words and what words mean and the purpose of words. Because guess what? In debate, what do you use? Words. Other odd tips, work to win. Practice with precision. Some of y'all are, are coming to practice with no flows from the last debate. But again, I really do want y'all to not get at a plateau and know that the debate is hard and it's is, it is going to be continuously rigorously challenged. Debate has always been challenging for all four years of my competitive, I mean, all eight years of my competitive debate career. It was always challenging, high school and college. So work with precision. It's going to be an uphill battle continuously, right? Some tournaments are going to, you know, you're going to get better wins than others, but to, to be at the top and to try to ensure that you stay at the top, it does take practice with precision. What you do in practice debates is what you'll transcribe in actual rounds. And that's something my debate coach would say all the time. Some of these things I'm telling y'all, my debate coach told me, what you do in these practice debates, what you do when we on skill-based practice, what you do at SLC, if all you do at SLC is eat pizza and talk to your, your, your buddies, and it's not about debate, then hey, what's going to happen at Glenbrooks or at any of these tournaments is going to be just exactly what you do at SLC and just exactly what you do when you're at home. 
And lastly, judge adaptation. Take notes when the judges get feedback. Review your ballots. You can come to me um, so that I can get those. If it's a problem, if I can't get them on the front end, of course, I'll email those judges to get it from the back end. Um, file your flows, right? Like if you um, if you flow on paper, right? then copy those paper flows onto an Excel sheet. Then you ain't never got to worry about coming to practice without your flows, right? You can be like, Mathino, I'm gonna print out my flow from that round. I filed it digitally. I have the teacher, I have the comments down here. Y'all have the Excel sheet, um, the, the flow Excel sheet. There's um, in that um, demo debate, you there's a link that will drive you over to the Excel sheet. You can download that template and you can use that template in that demo debate in order to um, add other sections and other, um, you can add other rows and columns for the reason for decision and everything else. And other notes you may wanna add about what did you think about the team? What did you think about the judge? Would you preference that judge? Remember y'all are SLC debaters now. Y'all have preference and stuff like that. So really make sure that you're adapting to your judges. If it's a judge that you may not get within your preference, can you appease them by your flows? Do you have the flows that's going to give, give the, sometimes you have to appease these arguments and make the arguments that the judges like sometimes, or kind of be like, even if you make the, even if arguments that they like and kind of make the arguments that they kind of go, you might not like that argument. You might not think it's the best argument. You might think it's the most a, a defensive argument, but you want to make sure that that judge that kind of is a little shifty on you sometimes you know, that you have all the arguments there for them not to be shifty, right? So, and you want to remember those judges who are, are in your corner and you want to remember those judges that you may want to strike. And remember, I look, I'm remember, I get stuff done. If there's a judge I really don't like, I will get them strike. I do not play. I love y'all. I really care about y'all. And if there's somebody that I really feel like is not going to give y'all a favor, I will argue. And, and please believe, I know I'm a good debater. So I will argue my point to wherever I need to argue to a point to get y'all whatever y'all need. So if I really need to sit up there with a tavern person, and I've done this for judges, I've done it for Najara, I've done it for myself. I don't mind doing that for y'all to make y'all sure that y'all are comfortable. Amy has done it for, for y'all. I will do it for y'all, okay? I'm not, I'm not going to allow y'all to be in a room where, and if there's someone who's watching around or a competitor to watch any of that, Y'all can come to me. Or even sometimes y'all tell me, I don't want you to watch this round. I want y'all to tell me when y'all don't want me to watch a round. But when it comes to debate practices, I do need to see y'all's debate practices more. When we get to the tournaments, I can definitely help y'all before round. I would like to see y'all sometimes in those actual debates. But if y'all don't want me to see me in those actual debates, that's really for you to really figure out the judge's perspective and the things that I'm not thinking about because the judge is providing feedback that I'm not thinking about. So you may want to really focus on that judge and I may not need to be in that room, but particularly when we practice, I really need to make sure that when you're going out that you have enough to give that judge for them not to be in, to, for them not to be in favor of you. Um, and then you want to have um, different strategies. So again, keeping your flows from previous rounds is important to figure out how you can maneuver and how to be flexible. Um, you should always be flowing. You should have pre-flows before you get to these tournaments. If you're not, if your act hasn't changed, you should have 15 pre-flows by now. <laughs> um, remember, if you need help with any of this, Slack me, send me or myself. For those who are watching online because it's recorded, um, make sure that you uh, uh, um, send me um, an email or Slack me. Please get on Slack. It's, again, it's how we do the work. Show up to debate practice, please, please register. If you have not registered again, as I stated in the beginning, um, here's the schedule. If you're just watching this video and you don't know much about our program and you just happen to um, see this video, because I'll be, I'll be uploading it soon. Um, these are the times we meet, okay? So we meet Thursdays like today. I'm not gonna post it today, but if you're watching this video, post our Thursdays. <laughs> Typically, we meet on Thursdays for this particular practice. This is the skill-based practice, if you're watching us on YouTube. Wednesdays, um, that is for middle school and high school. Uh, Daniel, how did, I, well, we'll talk about that later, Daniel. And then um, Fridays um, is SLC. Remember, tomorrow, SLC is canceled for those of us who are in this Zoom meeting. <coughs> Excuse me, SLC is canceled because of Veterans Day and there's no school. And you can sign in, if you're interested in traveling, um, civic engagement, um, community um, hours um, for me to be able to write recommendations for college. 
um, I'm going to write recommendations for those students who are in student leadership council. And so um, if you're looking and interested in student leadership council and you're looking for that additional benefits from bottle, please check us out. We also do, we're looking to do more community engagement work. We have some events coming up here soon to do more fundraising, to raise more money for our program so that we can do more travel. So, um, you know, people are not going to give us money unless they see what we do. So we're we're going to have to go out in the community more and show people exactly what this debate, what people don't know. what I didn't know what policy debate looked like when I joined. I'm like, this is weird. Y'all all like at this weird. No, I'm serious. That's how I thought. I'm like, y'all are weird. Why are y'all talking like this? And now I, it's like, I know this stuff like the back of my hand. So um, if you're literally trying to get immersed and you want to get more immersed and to, for this stuff to become um, more um, ingrained um, within your nature, like the back of the hand, definitely check out, um, check us out on Friday. And yeah, with that, we're gonna end here and see y'all later.